All right, guys. Um, we have a tougher conversation today. Uh, it's going to be something that you probably have not been exposed to before. So in the naturopathic world, most more than 50% of naturopaths don't believe in viruses and bacteria in the same conventional way that um, uh, allopathic physicians believe in them, okay? So this is one of the things I wanted to expose you to today. Viruses are just parasites, okay? And so we're gonna have a mild conversation about the difference between terrain theory and uh, terrain theory and germ theory. And then we're gonna get into the viruses or parasites and I'm gonna offer you some proof today. And the reason I'm putting this as part of the midwifery program isn't also because I'm also teaching you some natural health things, but it's also because I want you to start looking at the world from a different perspective. And when people say that um, things like ivermectin, you know, well, ivermectin treats so many different things. It doesn't treat viruses and it treats cancer and it treats parasites. Um, it's because all of those are parasites. Um, I, I want you to start reframing things and I want your mind to be thinking about what's causing something. And that'll be the next actual training video I do. But um, I kind of want to start letting go of the conventional, normal, doctory um, type of paradigm. And I want you to start looking at the possibility that there's something more out there. Um, and then there's a reason why people are getting so much healing in the naturopathic world, okay? And this is one of them, okay? So um, I'm gonna start this conversation with the difference between a with, uh, germ theory and terrain theory. And I usually start this with a story. And the story goes like this. You're driving down the road and there's a dead deer on the side of the road. And there's a bunch of vultures eating that dead deer. Do you think the vultures killed the deer? Well. No, that would be stupid, wouldn't it? Okay. So scientists, when we look at um, disease and pathogens and things underneath the microscope, we see the damage and then we see the virus or the bacteria or, or the parasite or whatever. Um, and we see it munching on that, um, you know, that decay or that waste product that the body's there. So we automatically assume that that's what caused that mess. What if that's not always the case? Like, um, the deer didn't, or the vultures didn't kill that deer. So germ theory, which is what almost the entire world subscribes to right now, says that um, the virus or the bacteria caused the problem, and the body's immune system has to go fix the problem, and there has to be, um, you know, uh, antibodies and this kind of thing. That's not exactly how this works. Um, and it, germ theory says that if there is a great big building and one person in that building of like 6,000 people, right, one person catches the flu and it has a recirculated air system, that every single person there will catch the flu because where the virus exists, there will exist the disease. And that's not true. And then, then they see the people that didn't catch it, well, they had a good immune system to it or they'd already had it at some point and put antibodies to it. What it's missing is, is that those people didn't have the waste product that that particular uh, virus or bacteria consumes. And I'm going to give you some, um, some case studies real quick. So uh, this is actually a real case study, and I need to reread my school. It was like 10 years ago, and I forgot what country it was in. But it was a great big tidal wave. Um, everybody got dysentery. There was this, everyone had the symptoms of dysentery, I should say the diarrhea, the, the abdominal pains, the fever, the whole nine yards. But when they tested everybody, everybody had the same symptoms, but only some tested positive for dysentery. Well, why is that? Well, because the symptoms can occur without the actual appearance of the virus or bacteria, okay? And so I kind of want you to be with that for a minute. Um, we're talking about the, the newest virus that's kind of going around, and I can't say the word because I will be banned from everything forever and ever even. But um, I guess the cough cough that's been going around. How many people do you know that the exact same symptoms yet tested negative? And how many people were asymptomatic and tested positive? Well, that would explain that situation right there. Um, there's a few more uh, situations. There was one more I wanted to think of real quick. 
anyway, we'll, we'll move on because there's other things I want to talk about today. But um, in the naturopathic world, we don't really consider viruses to be different than any other parasite. And it's very, very easy to understand when you look at the behavior or the illnesses or the, the, um, the different um, symptoms that are caused by viruses are the same ones that are caused by parasites. And it's also why a lot of the herbs, and I wanted to introduce a few herbs here. Can you turn my phone off? Um, uh, that's why a lot of different herbs treat both viruses and parasites. Um, and it's because there really isn't that much of a difference. Now, the main difference is, and this, this is gonna be a kicker, and I'm gonna go through the proof here in a little bit, but I kind of wanted to, while well, I have your attention, is um, viruses are cellular parasites. So some parasites infect the intestines, some parasites infect the pancreas, some uh, parasites infect uh, the lungs, some infect, you get the point, right? They infect different creatures, like some parasites will infect dogs, but not humans. Some parasites like goats, but not dogs. Um, in, in the, they're very specific to the host. Now, they're very also very specific to the level in the host. So some parasites affect the entire skin. Um, those would be your mites and your lice and your scabies. Um, some parasites um, affect bronchial tubes. Um, malaria is actually a parasite. Uh, coccidiosis is actually a parasite. Um, and I also believe that the <laughs> that's been going around is also a parasite. I've had that theory for a long time, but you can call it what you want. All of viruses is a cellular parasite. Now, um, this is going to matter in one giant way. Mankind has never ever, ever been able to isolate a virus from its host, okay? What that means for when we, you know, reproduce those and we try to, you know, we try to inject them someplace and do something with them, we always have the host cell in them, okay? What that means for your immune system is that if the host cell is a dog kidney, it can mean allergies to the dog because now you have antibodies to the dogs. If the host cell was a black boy, which is actually the most common host cell, I'm just kind of putting that out there. This isn't a racist conversation. This is a truth. If you have common heritages with that person, um, you would then have a higher chances of catching an autoimmune disorder because you are making T cells and B cells that are reacting to that cell that was put into your body. That, and if that cell has other common cells of your own body, it looks like an autoimmune disorder, okay? Um, I kind of want you to be with that for a moment. I don't want to rush past this fact. We have never been able to isolate a virus. Viruses cannot be isolated out of the host. Now, we're gonna kind of go through this a little bit and kind of, we're not gonna dive too much in this because I'll be banned from every platform ever. Um, these two sites I'm about to share with you um, are gonna be attached to uh, your Patreon. And so it'll be more to talk about, but um, here, let me go here, right here. Interesting, the Encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Britannica states that viruses are obligate parasites as they lack metabolic machinery of their own and generate energy or to sin or on their own to generate energy or to synthesize proteins. Okay. You know how we talk about, I don't know, we've haven't talked about it here yet personally, but um, RNA and MNA or um, yeah, RNA and DNA, um, we also have uh, metabolic processes. Um, uh, there's so many conversations here. I just want to, uh, um, so many things we need to talk about. The, the, these viruses are no different than parasites that can't live without a host. You can't reproduce, re reproduce without a host. It's just that their host is a cellular level. Okay. And 
Oh, there's so many things here I want to say. Uh, this expands on the requirement in that the hydrothermodynamic requirements for life is included. Okay, whoa. <sighs> okay. Okay, these are more things here. These are the actual research things. This one here is, sorry guys, I kind of got overwhelmed for a minute. You have to understand this is kind of new to me being on here and talking about things that are kind of, um, kind of intense. Um, there, what I wanted to talk about real quick before I moved on to the next slide was the mitochondria. So the mitochondria of all of our cells is the energy or powerhouse of the cell. That's what the virus is feeding on, They're, which is why our mitochondria is so impacted. That's why when we get sick, we're run down, we're drained because our cellular level is completely drained. We talked about mitochondrial metabolism, metabolism therapy or MMT. Um, that's why that works in repairing and getting rid of viruses and bacteria and other dysfunctions. It's why mitochondrial metabolism therapy is important. That'll be a whole um, training course on its own because that's uh, going to include some different um, textbooks and whatnot. And there's going to be some research you're going to have to do on your own. Um, but these parasitic, these I want to call them pa cellular parasites. So a virus is a cellular parasite. That's kind of the whole thing. As I feel like I'm rambling here. Um, it's easier when I have a student on the other side and I can actually communicate and feed back and forth and not just have slides up. And you can see how many tabs I have up here. This is actually typical. And I'm going to try to make it through all of those tabs because they're all there for you right now. I'm going to try to make it through those tabs this week. Um, I'm going to take one a little bit for myself. I'm going to talk about diabetes at the end of this conversation. Um, but we're going to have a whole separate section on diabetes anyway. Um, okay. We're going to hear, okay, an obligate, um, obligate, obligate parasites of cellular processes. Viruses must take over cellular macromolecular machinery. Um, it is also being clear that viruses routinely control intercellular signaling pathways through the direct and indirect control of kinesis and phosphokinesis. Okay, so that's the phosphorus in the cell. Um, I'm going to move over here. This is the, the part here that just drives my brain crazy. Um, if you guys ever talk to me about um, how I treat viruses or how I impact viruses uh, and help them go away and help restore the balance of, of uh, the host, um, I use enzymes. And this is why viruses obligate parasites that depend on the cellular factors for repl uh, replication. Pharmacology and inhibition of essential viral proteins, mostly enzymes, is an effective therapeutic alternative in the absence of effective vaccinations or vaccines. However, this strategy commonly encounters drug resistance mechanisms that allow these pathogens to invade control, to evade control. Okay, so the one thing that viruses have that... Um, that uh, parasites have and what made me originally put, connect the two and then find the research to support that was they have a biofilm. Whenever we're um, out there trying to get rid of parasites in a person, whether it's a big parasite that we can actually see with our naked eye or if it's a small parasite like a virus, it's a cellular parasite, there's a biofilm that coats that parasite. That biofilm is what it's defense against the body's enzymes and offense against the entire body itself. Um, and in the last training course, I talked to you guys about the interstitial fluid and interstitial, interstitial system. In that interstitial system, we have a lot of things swimming around it as part of that interstitial fluid. And one of those is enzymes. And in those enzymes, those enzymes would kill viruses. OK, if we had them in proper proportions and if they were present in our food in the way that they used to be, we would have those enzymes available. Also, when we get a fever, our pancreas are, um, starts massively producing pancreatic enzymes. Now, it's not just fever or heat that induces the pancreas to release, uh, to release lots of pancreatic enzymes. It's... Um, induced fever or actual fever from the body without exercise that it initiates the pancreas to start producing or mass producing pancreatic enzymes. Oh, shoo. That's what helps and that's why the body gets a fever. This is also why I teach do not fight a fever, okay? 
um, when people come to me and they're like, oh, well, this newborn has 103 fever. Okay, good. Uh, but the newborn, it's, it's a baby and it's 103 fever. Okay, I got it. Um, I say, keep the baby warm, hold the baby, do not fight the fever. Because that fever is telling that, that young immature pancreas to release as many pancreatic enzymes as it can to go help fight that virus. The more we control that fever, the less the body has to fight that virus, okay? <sighs> Lots of conversations here. The other thing is the biofilm around viruses are actually susceptible to heat too. Most viruses and um, cancers actually die at about 102 to 103 degrees which is why it's really important that we help our children get actual fevers, which is also why um, induced fevers with hyperthermia treatment, such as infrared saunas are so important. I used to have an infrared sauna in my office. I sold it this last year because it was just taking up a lot of space and I wasn't using it. And I felt like the world really didn't know what it was. Um, but you can have the same exact impact by sitting out in the hot sun, um, sitting in your car with the door closed. Um, the only difference is, is the, the color of the film. Um, so infrared has a red film and it kind of, uh, it has a red UV in, impact on the body. That would be like the only major difference. And the fact that it's red helps it penetrate the body deeper. And so that's kind of a big deal, but wearing a red shirt or even putting up a red piece of film on the car while you sat in it to get to 100, 203 degrees um, is important. Okay, Whew, so much conversations here. This is one of the big I have with school. And if you guys know of anybody who's real tech savvy, they can help me put these into modules and help me divide these up to make them in easier chunks. Um, because the way my mind works is like we started off talking about proteins being viruses. And then we talked about, um, you know, induced fevers and, and how the pancreas works and how I use enzymes to fight viruses. Everything is connected and everything is important, but not everybody can get that whole circle effect. So I'm going to go back real quick, and I'm going to recap. Viruses are parasites. They're just cellular parasites. There's parasites on the level of cell, okay? No difference than parasites on the level of intestine or parasites on the level of humans, <laughs> meaning that we're kind of a parasite on the, on the earth right now, aren't we? Kind of have a lot of impact and we need the host to live and that's the definition of parasite it doesn't make it wrong or right it's just what it is um trying to think of the next thing here um the next class is actually kind of an interesting class and i'm going to talk about why i don't chase diagnosed diagnoses and why if you come to me and say well my client has cholestasis of pregnancy or my client has xyz or pdq i'm going to ask for symptoms regardless of what um, the official medical diagnosis is. And you'll also never hear me diagnose somebody with something. Um, I don't believe in putting titles or names on symptoms. And that's the next course. And I'm hoping you guys stay tuned. I hope you find this beneficial. Um, I'm going to make sure I attach these. I'm going to have to redo this one. I'm not very happy with how much I jabbered. I've got to find a way to get this. Um, it's going to be easier for me if, if you guys actually show up um, and are on the other end of this, where I can actually talk to you and communicate with you and not just a screen and not just my background noises and things. So if you want to volunteer, all you have to do is send a message and we know availability. All right. Bye.